End-to-end -end encryption refers to the process of having encryption done at the endpoints. So on some level, this is related to the end-to-end -end principle, the idea that rather than having certain services provided within the core of the internet, we push those services out to the end hosts and they're done by clients and servers as part of their communication pattern. So end-to-end -end encryption, uh, there are certain links. So if you imagine the internet, we know that there are all of these nodes on the internet that are connected together in a variety of ways. And in certain cases, some of these links may themselves be encrypted, particularly wireless links. So if you've ever connected to a wireless router, here's my famous router diagram, um, you might have noticed that that router required a password or some sort of key that you had to install. And the reason is that that ensures that the communications um, between, so let's say that Alice is uh, engaged in um, some communication with Bob over our, our network here. and Alice's computer may be connected to this uh, router through some sort of wireless link, and that link itself may be encrypted. And there's good reasons to do that. Uh, the main reason to encrypt wireless links is because they're particularly e easy to eavesdrop on. So if I go anywhere where there's a wireless router and I have a computer that's configured properly, I can sniff or listen to all the traffic that that router exchanges with any clients that are connected to it. That's because the wireless medium that the router uses is a shared medium. I can't do that with a cable. So if I wanted to actually eavesdrop on the cable that runs out of my office and sort of through the building, I would actually have to go behind a wall or go into the ceiling or something, and that would be more complicated. But eavesdropping on wireless communications is quite simple. And so in a lot of cases, wireless routers will have some sort of security protocol in place to try to make sure that people can't decipher the communications that are occurring over the wireless channel. And that's done using standard encryption techniques. End-to-end -end encryption, on the other hand, would be done, so let's say Alice and Bob are having a conversation. Now, Alice's communications with her router may be protected, but once the, that um, message enters the internet, if it's not encrypted end-to-end, -end, the message is being transmitted in the clear over the public internet, and there may be powerful companies or organizations or governments that want to sniff that traffic, want to prevent that, uh, you know, want to observe it, want to store it, want to mine it for various pieces of data. And so just because you're using an encrypted link with your router doesn't mean that the traffic is encrypted all the way to Bob. So end-to-end -end encryption um, involves Alice and Bob, or Alice and Google.com, or Alice and Microsoft.com, or the websites that you go to, the various services that you use online, agreeing that we're going to encrypt the traffic at Alice and decrypt it at Bob and vice versa. So any message that Alice sends to Bob, she's going to encrypt it locally. So I'm going to take my message and produce my ciphertext, and I'm going to send that over to Bob, and Bob is going to decrypt it here. So end-to-end -end encryption refers to cases where the encryption is done by the end hosts that are involved in the transaction. So all of the messages that are exchanged, all the traffic that flows from one part of the internet to the other, contains encrypted data in that case. So once Alice and Bob agree on a way to encrypt their connection, all of the packets that they exchange are encrypted and protected during transit.